Hi guys, Ricky Pope here, and today on the Christian Nerds Unite podcast, I'm joined by Ashley Cox from the new podcast, Fangirling Over Jesus, plus scripture and nerdy news. And we'll get to all of that right after this. 2022 is flying by so fast, and I I just reviewed my goals for the year. Uh, It's not too late to set some effective goals for 2022 for yourself. And the Goal Process 101 ebook helps you do just that. With a straightforward process and practical exercises, you'll be guided to set the right goals for you and set out a plan to achieve them. Get your copy of the Goal Process 101 ebook um, by going to goalprocess101.com. Use CNU2022 at checkout to save 10%. Now, back to the show. After my conversation with Ashley Cox, I started thinking about that term, fangirl or fanboy, and the term implies more than just a casual fan. It's something more than just sitting back and watching. A fangirl or a fanboy dives in, they they investigate, they they involve themselves in their fandom. Uh, They're more than just a casual fan, they're a real follower. And that made me think of John 6. Jesus had recently fed more than 5,000 people with five loaves of bread and two fish. It was a miracle. But later in the chapter, Jesus chastises the people because many were following because of the food and not because of who he was. John chapter 6, 26 through 27 says, Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, You are looking for me, not because you saw the signs I performed, but because you ate loaves and had your fill. Do not work for food that spoils, but for food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For on him God the Father has placed his seal of approval. Then Jesus says, I am the bread that came down from heaven. Uh, But... Many had trouble accepting this and and understanding really what it meant. Uh, It says in uh, verses 60 through 66, On hearing it, many of his disciples said, This is a hard teaching. Who can accept it? Aware that his disciples were grumbling about this, Jesus said to them, Does this offend you? Then what if you see the Son of Man ascended to where he was before? The Spirit gives life, the flesh counts for nothing. The words I have spoken to you, they are full of the Spirit and life. Yet there are some of you who do not believe. For Jesus had known from the beginning which of them did not believe and who would betray him. He went on to say, This is why I told you that no man can come to me unless the Father has enabled them. From this time, many of his disciples turned back and no longer followed him. These were casual fans. They they weren't invested. They weren't true believers. They enjoyed what Jesus did for them, but not fully invested or accepting of who he was. I hope you'll take a moment this week and consider the question, am I a casual fan of Jesus? Or am I fully invested, fully dedicated, fully obedient, fanboy or fangirl, a true follower of Jesus? And now for some nerdy news. Marvel dropped the trailer for She-Hulk Attorney at Law to some mixed reviews this week. Tatiana Maslany will be playing Jennifer Walters, She-Hulk who had her comic debut over 40 years ago in 1980. 
The show's premise is interesting, and the cameos that are expected, such as Mark Ruffalo's Smart Hulk and Tim Roth as Abomination, among others, should be really fun. Maybe we will even get a cameo from Charlie Cox as Daredevil or Matt Murdock, uh, the lawyer. The biggest concern at this point seems to be the lackluster CGI on the lead character. Uh, if the CGI improves, it could be a absolutely phenomenal show. Um, but if it doesn't, I'm afraid it'll pull a lot of us out of the story when she appears on screen. I really hope it's better when the show is released. I am really excited about this show, but I think the CGI really has to improve for this to be convincing. Speaking of shows about lawyers, Hollywood Reporter is saying that sources have confirmed that Marvel is moving forward on a new Daredevil series for Disney+. Plus. They have reported that Matt Corman and Chris Ord, creators of the U.S. spy series Covert Affairs, will write and produce. No reports yet if this will pick up where the Netflix show ended or if it will start a whole new continuity. There's also no confirmation as to whether this will continue the darker tone, uh, more adult feel of the Netflix productions or if it will reflect the style of you know the other Marvel Disney Plus shows such as Hawkeye or Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Box Office Mojo reports that Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness led the box office for a third week with $31 million and a worldwide box office now of over $800 million since it opened. And the new release, Downton Abbey, A New Era, coming in a distant second at only $16 million. And our friends over at Family Camp dropped from number 9 to number 11 this week, taking in almost $1 million this weekend, uh, totaling almost $3 million since opening last week. Let us know what movies you are excited about seeing coming up. Well, it's time for us to jump into our interview with fangirling over Jesus's Ashley Cox. FOJ's website says they celebrate the intersection of the gospel and sci-fi pop culture fandoms through geeky fashion, blogs, and devotionals. Let's get right into the interview. Ashley Cox, it is so great to have you on the Christian Nerds Unite podcast today. Hey, <laughs> thanks for having me. I'm so excited. <laughs> so, um, so tell us a little bit now. I know fangirling over Jesus is your uh, is kind of your thing. That's your website. Mm -hmm. uh, tell us how all that started. <laughs> where, where did the name come from? I mean, other than you're you're a girl and you're a fan and sure. you love Jesus. I mean, I get that. But uh, but how how did that all come about? I love that. Um, the the idea itself started um, when I was helping the swim team that I was coaching for at the time with their social media, web stuff, all that jazz. Mm -hmm. And um, so I was like, well, I could do this for other teams. Um, it's really valuable stuff, but there's not always room in the budget for that for some teams. So I, mm -hmm. that, yeah, it kind of lagged. And um, I was kind of getting bored with it anyway. And it was a, it was a combination of things. It started First, I think, from uh, getting to go to Star Wars Celebration in 2019 in Chicago. Mm -hmm. um, I, as someone who, at that point, I was working for my church um, and had been for a couple of years, and I know, have been a believer since 2012, but, like, it, it amazed me that I could go to this convention and, as an introvert, <laughs> who doesn't always like talking to people, ironically, I've gotten better at that, but, like, it surprised me that I could be in a line with, you know, anybody and we could just strike up conversation because we loved this thing so much, you know, together. And we might love different parts of Star Wars, but, um, but we could talk about it and uh, with, with enthusiasm, with detail and whatnot. And sometimes, I don't know, this isn't the case at every church, but sometimes that's hard to achieve mm -hmm. even in church. Um, and, so that was kind of in my mind. I also wanted, I knew I wasn't very consistent in the word and reading the Bible. Um, and I wanted a more, oh, 
more fun way to do that <laughs> for me, <laughs> like for me that, you know, I could more easily relate to God in. Um, I've met Hector at Faith and Fandom and I have an incredible respect and I admire what he does. Um, and, um, and I also just like, I was that person in community group, um, in my small group at church who would like, we'd be talking about, you know, the sermon and I'd be like, Oh, this part of the sermon reminded me of this thing in finding Nemo or star Wars. And they're like, what? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, okay, there's gotta be people out there like me. And I also just felt like I would get, sometimes I'd get really weird responses when I'm like, yeah, like I am a girl. I'm a huge star Wars nerd. I'm a huge sci-fi nerd. Um, and I'm a believer and people sometimes give you a weird stare over that. And I'm like, okay, this, this has to change. And if I can be part of that, let's do it. And um, as far as the name, cause you know, my girlfriends and I would be like, Oh, we're, you know, having a fangirl moment over, you know, star Wars or having a fangirl moment over X, Y, Z. And so that phrase is kind of there and it's a convention. It's, it's used at conventions a lot, I think. And it, it is a little bit of a clunkier name, I know, but um, I knew that I wanted- And it's a little on the nose. <laughs> it's a little on the nose, <laughs> but I wanted, I knew that I wanted Jesus to be in the name. Mm. Um, I wanted to make it very clear. Like I'm happy to, I, I respect where other people come from and I'm happy to hear their beliefs, but I want to be clear, like I'm coming at things from a gospel Christian perspective. Mm -hmm. um, I believe in Jesus. Jesus is my Lord and savior. Um, and I wanted, I just wanted it to be very clear and upfront. Um, I wanted to identify that I was obviously, you know, that I'm a girl and this is the perspective you're also getting is a, is a girl. And that phrase fangirling just coming from that convention that kind of combines that faith and fandom aspect for me. Um, so that's where the name came from. And, uh, it's a lot easier to just say FOJ for short, but I do really love the name fangirling <laughs> over Jesus. <laughs> so that's where that came from. <laughs> uh, that is, that is, that is the curse of having, um, having a three word name. It will mm -hmm. almost always become a three letters. Yes. Almost instantly, uh, as Christian Nerds Unite has become CNU in most of my uh, <laughs> in most of my uh, typing. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> well, well and that's that that sorry, just that's the thing too is like because of where my shop is, it's not like so. Even though it's called fangirling, it's not just for girls. And so on the shirts and stuff, I do shorten it to just FOJ because I know guys are buying this stuff and I want them to feel comfortable mm -hmm. wearing it. And I understand that that can make them feel uncomfortable, but, um, but thankfully I have a lot of guys that are purchasing my stuff, which is awesome. <laughs> so, well, speaking of, uh, you know, purchasing your stuff, your, your merchandise, you were kind of <laughs> merchandise was kind of your thing. Mm -hmm. Um, so, uh, you know, talk to us a little bit about what kind of things are available. I know, you have a term you use everyday cosplay as well. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Um, it's so funny to me how the shop has evolved because originally it started with just like, oh, well, I'll do a shirt of the month and we'll do, you know, uh, fandom on the front, Bible on the back is kind of how I say it. Mm -hmm. And um, my very first shirt was uh, from The Last Jedi. It was Darkness Rises and Light to Meet It on the front and John 1 5 on the back light shines in the darkness and the darkness cannot overcome it. Mm -hmm. And um, then I found out about Printful, which is the drop shipper that I use. Um, and they are phenomenal. They do an excellent job. Um, their, their products and their printing are such good quality. And so, and it lets me have time to just design these really awesome things. And it just evolved in somewhere. Um, I'm trying to think of what the first really big item, it may have been Ahsoka products, like like Snips and Fulcrum products, because um, I, I, well, if you go to my shop, you can tell I, re I like really loud and bold and um, bright things, <laughs> typically. Um, and, uh, and so as far as like, getting to create some stuff for fans, especially of like Snips and and the, the pattern that goes along with that to everyday cosplay, which just kind of, it, it I think that actually started with um, my friend Chris is a huge Captain America fan and the Sam Wilson Captain America. Hmm. And um, that, that costume at the end of Falcon and Winter Soldier is incredible. And I was like, I feel like I could maybe 
do that <laughs> somehow <laughs> digitally, which is like, I never went to school for graphic design. This is literally just me figuring out and tinkering with stuff in Canva. And, um, and I just started working on that design. I'm like, Ooh, this, this looks good. Hey, I think this, I think people might want to wear it. Like, you know, but it's, but it's everyday cosplay because it's not just like a spandex suit that you're going to wear to a con. Like I have a dry fit version and a regular shirt version and you can wear it from, you know, doing errands to going to a convention to going for a run. I have a lot of guys that will buy the dry fit versions and they wear them to the gym and they feel like a superhero. And I'm like, let's go. Like, that's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> you know, like I've got a Boba Fett one. I've got Bucky. I've got, you know, just all of these different, um, all these different characters that people love. I just had somebody um, request a, uh, a Mando one. And that was a lot of fun because he wore it at Star Wars at night. I think that was on May 4th at Disney. So he got to wear it there. And I it just, that to me is so cool because they get to embody that character without having to put on everything and buy mm. like a thousand dollars worth of stuff, you know? Yes. So, yeah. Absolutely. Now, um, speaking of cosplay, now you've done a little cosplay, a little, <laughs> a, a little bit, and uh, as I recall, you have some kind of story about uh, Star Wars Celebration, yeah, and, and trying to to do some cosplay there. Want to tell us a little bit about it? Sure. Um, so my favorite, my fav my oh my gosh, it's Kristen's fault. That's our joke. My friend Kristen introduced <laughs> me <laughs> like two two weeks. Before Star Wars Celebration 2019, she introduced me to Star Wars Rebels. And I absolutely, like, not fell in love as like, ooh, fell in love. But, like, I just fell in love with the character of Kanan. And mm. the, the journey that Kanan Jarrus goes through, the fact that he's a Jedi and his journey through that, his doubt through that, his, his, his attempts to teach Ezra through that, like, just the whole character. Mm -hmm. It just really hit for me. I, I absolutely loved it. And so she introduced me to it two weeks before celebration and all of a sudden I'm basically binging because they were going to have a panel at Star oh, Wars okay. celebration, even though it'd been off the air for a bit, they were going to have a panel, excuse me. And so she said, you know, there are probably going to be some spoilers. So if you can, let's try to get to it. Cause there's a couple, you know, kind of big deal episodes um, later. And so I started binging it and I've never done a cosplay before then I have no idea how you melt foam to make armor I had <laughs> none of it <laughs> absolutely none of it and all of a sudden I'm at Home Depot at eight o'clock trying to figure out how to do these things like how do like how do I melt this foam that I found at Michael's that's not the right kind of foam but this is all I got you know like yeah it was, you know, and figuring out how to paint it and how to make it look weathered and what's the best, you know, Amazon two day delivery I can do to get a sweater that looks like Canaan's, you know, stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> and um, it was so much fun because I, I pulled something together for Canaan. And uh, the very first day of celebration that we went was Friday and we had booked a... Um, we had booked a group photo with the Star Wars Rebels cast. The only person that wasn't there was Steve Blum. And um, so we got a photo with them. And it was so cool because bef even before then, I had like other people, especially other girls that were like, yes, female Kanan, this is awesome. And I just felt huge. Like I was so excited to rep that, represent that. And then when we got to the photo op, like Freddie Prince Jr. is there. And he's like, <laughs> oh, I love your cosplay. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Freddy <laughs> Prince Jr. like my cosplay. Um, I like you can tell in the photo, like it's somewhere on my Instagram. I'm just beaming, and then it was cool too because I ended up having a little extra money in my budget. So that same day, I went and got an autograph from him too. So it was just like that Friday was cloud nine for me to get to do my first cosplay that way with a character I adored and get to meet the guy who voices him. It was just that was like I'm I'm good. I'm like. <laughs> the rest of the weekend <laughs> is going to be wonderful just because Friday was. So, <laughs> so that that's was, awesome. Yeah, it was great. <laughs> that's awesome. Now, now on your website, you have some other things there. Mm -hmm. um, now, you've got your blog. Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah. So, FOJ was just supposed to be a blog <laughs> initially. Okay. When I started it, it was just going to be a blog relating faith and fandom from a girl's perspective. Um, I like writing a lot. I studied screenwriting in college. Um, 
I, I felt like I processed best uh, through writing. And so for all those reasons, it was going to be a blog. Um, it's a little bit lagged lately <laughs> just because it shifted so much to the shop. And so mm. it shifted so much to the shop. And then I, I moved in with a really amazing roommate, um, my friend Laura, and we joke that we've turned each other into verbal processors because we used to both live alone. <laughs> and so now it's really like, I still have some blog things and I actually have a couple people um, that have graciously, uh, are, uh, they've asked if, you know, they could help or if they, that I get to basically, I'm going to partner with in the future that are going to help with the blog a little bit, which I'm really excited about. Um, mm. One is a girl named Lucy and she is awesome. She's a teenager and she's, yeah, she's going to be so much fun to work with. Um, and uh, which is really cool too. Like that, to me, that was really cool, but like other people want to be part of it and other women want to be part of this, which is really cool. Nice. Um, but yeah, so there's the blog on there. There's um, links to uh, devotionals and some guest experiences. We're kind of shifting things around right now because I have, because of becoming a verbal processor, <laughs> um, I had started doing, instead of really blogs, I started doing devotionals through social media, which is the same idea relating faith and fandom, but just doing it in under 10 minutes uh, via audio. Mm -hmm. We finally got onto Anchor FM, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts. So now it's becoming, an, it's coming onto that podcast channel. And so we're in the process awesome. of getting that on the website too. Yeah. So thank you. <laughs> Very cool. Yeah. I, I'm excited about all the stuff you're doing. I I think it, uh, you're, you're really doing some, some great things, some good kingdom work. And, uh, you know, it's a niche that, uh, needs to be filled personally. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, like you said, there, there, sometimes there's some, uh, pushback mm -hmm. and uh, I felt the same way, you know, uh, I'm a guy, you know, mm -hmm. being a Christian nerd and I felt some of the similar pushback, mm -hmm. but, uh, part of the reason Christian nerds unite came to be, mm -hmm. but That's so I'm, so cool. I'm definitely right there with you. Mm -hmm. So, what is your next big adventure that you're working on? <laughs> yes. Um, well, God's just been incredible. Um, so I know this won't come out for probably a little bit, but the cool thing is actually, so tomorrow is May 7, and uh, there's a race here in Greensboro called May the Course Be With You. Hmm. And... Um, I know the woman who directs the race. We met a couple years ago when it was COVID and everybody did it virtually. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, she's aware of my shop. And so she um, reached out last week and she was like, hey, like, would you be interested in having a booth at our race next week? So I don't, because I don't have inventory currently, we're working on that. Um, mm -hmm. I'll have samples and whatnot and QR codes and I'll take manual orders, but I get to be at this race that I love that benefits restoration counseling, which is a Christian counseling, Christian counseling for women mm. center. Um, and the cool thing is I've been praying about wanting to go, wanting to take FOJ to a convention. Mm -hmm. I've had a lot of, <laughs> I've had a lot of my friends say, okay, so what are you going to con? When are you going to convention? And I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> I, don't, I don't have inventory. I don't have marketing. I don't, I don't know. I have business cards and stickers. <laughs> and uh, my mom and I have talked and I've been talking to Hector um, about his, his perspective and his thoughts. And um, so the first one is now, which is also kind of nice at getting to do the booth tomorrow at the, at the run is helping me kind of like, okay, like, here's a very mini version of what it could be like to do a con. So it's good practice. Um, mm. cause that is one thing I'd like to do. I've also had, um, I've had a lot of people ask me, you know, you do these devotionals. When are you going to, are you going to write like a devotional book at some point? Mm. Um, which sounds a little intimidating. <laughs> because, <laughs> um, not, not because of the writing part. Cause that I'm not worried about. It's kind of, I, I got to go give a talk at my friend Chris's community group last week and it was about grief and it was, um, I didn't feel qualified to be able to do something like that because it's like, just because it was longer and it's teaching and that, I don't know, like, you know, it's just something I've never done before. And I was, 
really thankful they asked, but it, it did, it went really well. God was so good through it and he used it, I think, to, to help me and help other people in the group that are going through various stages of grief. And it's kind of the same thing with this devotional book. I want to do it. Um, I want to write it. Part of me doesn't feel qualified, but at the same time, going through any grief journey, I think can make you more, not just me, but like generally you can make you more qualified. So it, mm. that's probably what, that is one of the things I'd like to do next is do like maybe a 30 day devotional book that um, is specifically about grief, but different things that we see in fandom about grief. Cause there's different types mm. of grief. It's not just when somebody mm -hmm. passes, it can be diagnosis. It can be job related. It can be a whole gamut of things. Um, how do we see that in fandom? How do we see that in the Bible? And how can we relate to that personally? So that's um, those are the two big things that I'm kind of looking at right now to, to move forward in. That sounds fantastic. <laughs> um, definitely Thanks. let me know when you're um, when you're ready to start promoting uh, the devotional. Mm -hmm. I'd love to have you back on the show and talk about the devotional specifically. <laughs> so, what are you nerding out about right now? What are you fangirling <laughs> over right now? Yes. Um, lots of, lots of things. Moon Knight. Cause that just, we just had that finale. Yes. Holy cow. That was amazing. Um, <laughs> after tonight, my roommate and I are going to go see Dr. Strange tonight. So I will be fangirling out over that afterwards. I'm sure. Um, and then, uh, she's actually watching rebels for the first time. And so I'm rewatching it with her and I'm just like, Kaden all over again. <laughs> so <laughs> that's been really fun. Plus just like I, we had May the 4th, you know, a couple of days ago and May the 4th is just like such a dear day to my heart just because I love seeing everybody else's posts on social. I love the fandom community of it. I really love, it's funny because I love the meme. It's, um, what is it? It's Rogue One and it's with, uh, why am I blanking on his name? Cassian. He's like, you know, this is suddenly real for you. I've been in this fight for six years, but yes. it's like far worse. You know what I mean? Yes. But it's funny because I was that person. Like, I didn't really deep dive into Star Wars until Force Awakens, mm. which is which is something people are like, wait, what? Really? Like, yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, so I feel that a little bit from both sides because. But I, I just think that's such a funny thing. So we watched Rogue that, One on Wednesday night. It was so much fun. So very cool. That that's a little funny to me because I <laughs> I actually remember seeing episode four in theaters the first time. I'm that's an old so man. Cool. <laughs> I wish I could have had that experience. I was born into the darkness. Uh, <laughs> uh, but <laughs> I did see Revenge of the Sith in theater, but I didn't it was my my friend wanted to go and i was like yeah sure that sounds like fun like that was that was why i went so yeah uh that's awesome though uh, <laughs> so now um kind of as a as a side that you do so many things um you you have like 15 hats yep. um now you're doing some acting as well Mm -hmm. How, what, yeah. what is that like for you? I it's know so you said you, you've done some screenwriting, or you, you trained as a screenwriter, mm -hmm. but now you're an actor. Yes. Yeah, I um, I started, there's a really great studio here called In Studio, shout out In Studio, um, in Greensboro. And uh, man, our instructors are super talented. We've had people that are Netflix stars currently that have come out of that studio. Like it's, they're just very gifted. Um. <clears throat> So I started training there in 2017 because I just wanted to see what the other side of the camera was like. I felt like it would help writing. I had studied screenwriting in college. I went to LA and um, was able to intern with um, in the production office for Haven, which was amazing. Um, the writers and the and the producers were incredible. They it was a great learning experience. And um, I always wanted to go back out because I keep those contacts and. I love what they did. Um, and so I was going to try, you know, to get back into writing. And then I started acting to see that other side of the camera. And I was like, Ooh, this is challenging and I really like it. And I want to see if I can, I would just want to see if I can go further in it. And um, la like right at the beginning of COVID, cause that's a great, 
time is when I got my agent. <laughs> it's when everybody starts everything right before a pandemic. Uh, what are you talking about? Absolutely. So that, that is, was great. That is, the, that is the comment. I hear that comment more often than anything else I ever hear. It's, well, so I decided to do this thing, and then a month later, COVID hit. It's so true. It's so true. I was supposed to have an interview with my current agent in person and then COVID hit and it was a phone interview and but she booked me. Her name's Sherry. She's wonderful. I absolutely love her. Um, and, uh, you know, so we've slowly been getting work and this year been, you know, it, it's been mainly commercials thus far. Um, doing a, a local movie right now, which is super cool. It's a different experience that I'm really excited about, um, getting to do something more dramatic. I enjoy commercials, they're fun, um, but it is cool to get to see, you know, the other genres and whatnot as well. Um, and uh, yeah, I just, I, I always, I loved my dad. It, I guess it kind of goes back to my dad. He, gosh, he loved watching like Turner Classic movies. And I swear mm -hmm. he probably knew as much as um, Osborne, the guy who used to host it, Robert oh, yeah. Osborne. Yeah. And um, he would always, my dad would always be that person that was like, okay, you see that star, they're a character actor and they did this and they also did that and that, that, and that. I've realized that I'm now that person. I've started doing that to my roommate <laughs> and my friends. I'm like, okay, you see that person? This is, and I'm like, oh gosh. Hi dad. <laughs> MD, IMDB <laughs> is like my favorite place yes. in the world. It's so good. It's so helpful. <laughs> and uh, and so I just, I love that. And my dad was born in 37, 1937. So he, I had a very interesting, like, I was brought up on a lot of classics and then a lot of 80s stuff. My mom is, it was uh, 21 years younger. And so like MASH and the original mm -hmm. Five O, Magnum PI, all that stuff. And um, then as I've gotten into the convention world with sci-fi, I, I, I'll, I'll be in the autograph and photo op area. And I'm like, one day I want to be on the other side of this line. I want to be on the other side of this booth because I love the inspiration mm. that um, like Ashley Eckstein is a wonderful example. I got to meet her last year at GalaxyCon and She's been a huge inspiration for me as a female in fandom, as a strong person, as, you know, with everything, she, as a businesswoman, just everything that she does. And I got to meet her and I'm basically like, we're basically having a cry fest as I, because I'm telling her this. And it just like, she has that impact on everybody. And I just, that's my goal with Fangirling Over Jesus too, is like, I just want to impact people for the better. I want to tell people about god and where he plays in that and why he's part of that and 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 i would like to someday be on that other side of the booth because then you get you get to say things like that a little bit louder and in a world that's so broken right now mm -hmm. we need that we need to have something strong to look forward to for faith for for hope and um and i don't want people to feel like they're alone either and that's that's a big driver too, and I don't want them to think that Jesus has left them alone. So, yeah. <laughs> Good word. Good word. I honestly, I love hearing about believers who are getting into the industry, who mm -hmm. want to make an impact there. Um, I I've interviewed several believers that are working in the industry right now, and uh, I I just I love to hear their stories and I love to hear their heart. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it's an industry that can be kind of dark sometimes. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, for those of us who really want to invest in the time and the effort and want to be part of that industry, we have an opportunity to be a bright light yes. in a dark place. Well, it's cool. Like, I love, um, like, Matt Lanter, the voice of Anakin in The Clone Wars. He's a believer. And, I, like, he has that opportunity um he has that opportunity i don't know I, I i haven't heard from him as much um because i just starting in clone wars but like the fact that that's not even just on his instagram profile to me is huge like little little mm. things like that add up and i think james arnold taylor J wow we can talk james arnold taylor <laughs> i think he's a believer too you know and that's yeah that's so cool exactly what you're saying so 
Absolutely. <laughs> well, Ashley, um, anything else you want to share with the Christian Nerds Unite audience before we wrap up? Hmm. Oh, yes. Um, we also just recently started a Patreon, uh, which oh. you may or may not have seen. Um, it is, uh, I think if you go to patreon.com slash fangirling over Jesus, pretty sure that's right. That is on our website on the front page. I promise. <laughs> I'll put links down Thank below you. once we know exactly what everything is. <laughs> Things are just so <laughs> shifting right now. But the cool thing about this Patreon is that, um, so there's of course, there's a, there's four, no, five or six different levels, of course, different amounts. Um, what I'm really excited is, uh, this is actually something my church does, and it's something that I wanted to partner with other fans on, is when we, we have a goal on there, when we reach 20 patrons of any level, 20 mm -hmm. patrons, of, so everybody could be at the lowest level, and that is awesome. When we reach at least 20 patrons of any level, um, we will go to the Compassion International website and we will find a child that we can support. And the cool thing about that is that, um, cause it's about, I think $38 a month to support a child mm -hmm. and they're going to, they, I've been wanting to do this for a while, but I think there's something beautiful about kind of as a community getting to do that. So mm -hmm. when we get at least 20 patrons, um, it's going to me and y'all. So at least 21 of us, uh, we're going to be a village that gets to help care for a child somewhere in a country that desperately needs help, whether through school, medical, through prayer. Um, I'm really excited about that. So I'd encourage you all to check that out because that I think could be a really cool way to do some good in this world. So Awesome. <laughs> well, I will definitely put links down below for everything, but really quick, how can people connect with you? How yes. can people keep up with what you're doing? Um, I think the best way is probably our, our Instagram is probably the most up to date. Um, okay. So our uh, handle is at fangirling underscore over underscore Jesus. Cause somebody, somebody had fangirling over Jesus. And I'm like, why, <laughs> why do y'all have this? <laughs> so isn't that you, annoying? It's so annoying. <laughs> but if you if you search fangirling over Jesus, you'll find us. It's a black logo with a couple arrows that point up for God. Um, <laughs> and uh, we have a link tree there that can take you to the shop, to the website, to the Patreon. You can also go to our website, fangirlingoverjesus.com. Um, and that'll have links to different places, too. You can find us on Etsy in the shop and whatnot. But, yeah, those are the best ways. <laughs> awesome. Ashley, it has been a pleasure having you on the show. Thank you. Definitely want to have you back and let me know mm -hmm. when you're ready to uh, start promoting your devotional. Will do. Thank you so much. This is awesome. It was great connecting with Ashley. And uh, I've put links down in the show notes so you can connect with her. Make sure you check those out. And make sure you check out fangirlingoverjesus.com for all of her information. Before I go, I do want to let you know about a special project we're working on here at Christian Nerds Unite, and Ashley is a part of it. Uh, we all will be releasing some bonus episodes within the next couple of weeks. Some of you know I was really excited about the Marvel Multiverse role-playing game playtest that just recently came out. Well, I gathered a group of believers who are also podcasters to join me in a play test. And we recorded the whole thing. Uh, we hope to put out a couple of bonus episodes each month over the next three months. We've already recorded the first session and are set to record our next session. We want you to check out these special episodes. I, I think you'll really enjoy them. Well, that's all I have for you today. Don't forget to like subscribe, click the bell, all those things, whatever those things are, click all those things so that you can keep up with us. And every time we release new content, you will be informed. And uh, you can find all of our social links, our links to our YouTube channel and our online store at christiannerdsunite.com. I do want to take a moment to encourage you to join us as a supporter on Patreon. We've changed all of our Patreon levels, and every level has some great benefits and makes a huge difference in ministry we are able to do. Supporters will also get to hear exclusive stories of believers we are serving with around the world. To check it out or to become a partner, go to patreon.com slash christiannerdsunite or christiannerdsunite.com and click support from the menu. 
And while I'm at it, I want to thank our current Patreon supporters, Sim, Peter, Joe, and our first ever supporter, Jared. Thank you so much for your support. It really does make a difference. Before you go, I want to leave you with this blessing from Romans 15. May the God who gives endurance and encouragement give you the same attitude of mind toward each other that Christ Jesus had, so that with one mind and one voice you may glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. We'll see you next week. Blessings.